we are back in sunny UK and we are continuing the plein air um, tour of three months and we are staying with a friend and she's got this most amazing view next to her house it's Worcestershire we're in and looking across there I think is towards Wales is that right that's correct yeah so you can hear my husband Nick I'm just gonna turn the camera around straight away this time oh, and just no. show you he wasn't ready for that <laughs> I've painted this scene before and there are sheep in this field usually so we're hoping that they'll do the rounds chewing their way around the field and the hope that they will come back so we can put them in because it makes such a difference to have you know some life in there um, so first of all I'm going to just plot out so let's let's start off so what size board have you got there? Oh, yes a 12 by 14 inch um, I've gone slightly you know because I, I quite often like 11 by 14 but I've done deeper because it's a pretty sky today so I can I can put a bit more sky in it so we will say to the sheep come back <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, the important bit for me is getting the, the, the sense of distance between those trees. I love all that patchwork hills. Um, that's my favourite bit. So I'm just working out what, how much I can kind of squeeze in to make the composition right in between there with the trees as kind of stoppers on the sides. So let's have a go. I was just thinking whether I need this. Um, so you've got three trees there, and whether I need all three of them. Whether I could take out the far right one um, and use the one behind it and then the one behind that, because then it's a kind of a three, because two doesn't look so good. So that's my thinking. Let's see if it will work. lose the front right tree or not have it in the composition. Correct, yeah, I think so. I'm going to try and see if it will work and even put this one going off the side as well and it needs to be further back than that as well. This one's forward and that will help the composition that it's not at a same plane and then there's one behind it too in there. I decided that the tree was possibly a little bit big. Um, I want, you know, maybe that much sky, and therefore the tree has to be about here. And whether the, that tree goes off, I don't know yet, um, off the board. So I just carry on. So I've used uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna to just to map out. I think that's composition working now, I hope. Um, I'm going to now mix my colours and talk through the what I'm choosing. So my first colour is uh, to do the darkest of the trees. I'm using ultramarine and cadmium yellow and it is quite a, a dark start. Um, I'm going to use some turpentine to um, thin that out. I might put some a little bit of red in there I think just to warm it up and get rid of some of that brightness of color so if I put it just a little bit of you can see there it's quite cool when I put some titanium in there it cools it down that might be a bit too cool all right I have finished my mixing and I thought I'd just talk you through the colors that I've used so that was the green that I started with, the dark green uh, with the ultramarine and cad yellow um, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And then um, this one is cobalt and uh, lemon yellow. 
uh, so that's kind of a little bit cooler green. This one is cerulean and lemon yellow with a little bit of yellow ochre. That one is yellow ochre and cerulean and a little bit of scarlet red for a warmer green. And then the blues, which is uh, like in the far distance of the hills, um, I've used um, ultramarine um, for this one with permanent rose and a little bit of cad yellow. And that one is uh, cobalt and lemon yellow. And then warm, uh, some kind of hay colors, uh, grassy colors, which I've used cad yellow, scarlet red, and um, that's, that's got more yellow in and that one's got more red in. You can kind of see the difference. And then that one over there is a sky one um, as a start off, which is cerulean and white at the moment. And I might add some yellow. So I hope that helps. Um, if you want me to do more colour mixing, just put it on the comments, let me know. I'm now going to start. I'm starting with that big tree because it is dominant um, and I'm going to use that first mix. Uh, it will be like an underpainting um, using the turps to make it quite thin. Here we go! Um, also, I don't know if you've noticed that the sheep have come. So they're working their way up. So that's good news that they might actually be coming up the field. Fingers crossed. on that. The sky is reflecting in my uh, pot, in my palette so I don't have a, a, a head, bull head on here so I can't actually um, tilt it very well. I can move it down a little bit maybe. That's maybe a bit better. Um, it doesn't often happen. Just making sure this colour's right. It's not bad. So in the in the centre of a tree, it's always quite dark. It's like the core of it. You've got to make sure you go dark enough to start with. I'm using a Rosemary and Colt Co. Ultimate Long Flat. It's a bristle brush, number eight. Why would you be using that? Uh, I quite like it because it's long, it's quite kind of... Tactile? Mm, it allows me to do kind of nice curvy marks and kind of quite soft. If you, that one is, it's quite, it's a lot harder and harder to make soft mark, you know, roundy tree marks. So, roundies, we like um, roundies. <laughs> yeah, so that's why there is method. But it's good to ask questions. Thank you, Mr. B. Obviously, I knew the answer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so um, I'm gone quite thin. I don't know if it's too thin. Um, I can always go over. I tend to go thin to start, especially with such a dark colour. Um, and then I'll go lighter after. I'm going to add just a little bit of variety in there. But it is an underpainting. It is an underpainting, yes. Just on the outsides, because it is obviously a lot lighter on the outsides, because it's where the light catches. Don't want it too chalky. If you look now at the tree, you can see how light it is at that kind of V at the top. There's a real light kind of shining on it. So I'll have to capture that later, make sure I remember it. I thought it looked a bit like a butterfly, this tree. Hopefully yeah. I will do it justice. You know a song about that? <laughs> I'm not breaking into song at this point. Okay. Too early in the game. Too early. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm now going to do tree number two. 
which is not the foreground tree. No, it's the one behind it. So I've changed the compo a little bit. Mm. Try and make it different somehow. Whether it's going to be bluer or greener, I want it different to the one on the left. Mm. I'll add a bit of blue, I think. So it's shorter than the other one and further back in the painting, you know, in the scene. Looks a bit clumpy at the moment, but hopefully I can refine it and make it look nicer. This back one I'm making um, a little bit lighter. You can see I've added white in there and making it a lot smaller too so he goes back in the distance. I think he might be a bit light. Just needs a bit of dark in the bottom. This is quite a tricky colour to get right. It's very light and um, it's a cross between a kind of a yellowy and a greeny. Um, so I thought that I'd start with a yellowy, kind of a warm yellowy, and then add more green as I get to the foreground. Um, but it's so light with the tree, it really stands out, makes the tree stand out. So I put, I've started this next because it's next to the tree and then I can tell if it's working or not with the tonal values and the colors. So sometimes um, the paintings don't work. Here's one I did earlier. So this one I don't like. Um, I think it is actually too deep for the scene. It needs to be a bit wider and I've decided to put all the trees in and keep it simple. So I've got to this stage again, same stage, um, but this is an 11 by 14. So wish me luck that it works out. Next stop is the shadows. I'm going to use a similar mix to the trees but it's just a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer. So, I think it needs a bit more cool in there. We get to do those shadows. So this is one of my favorite things, showing light and shadows show light. I'm doing them now because um, it, they will change obviously, the light will change around. Um, so the patchwork in the far distance of all the fields, um, I'm going to start as with a base and then put all the patches on top of that base because I think if I try to just do all the patches it might be a bit bitty. So I'm going to have this as my Kind of base colour, I'm just making sure it's cool enough. That's cobalt in there, um, and also light enough because it's quite in the distance. So I'm squinting my eyes and just seeing if it's if it's working. And I think it is. Um, I don't want it too thick either. So I'm gonna kind of do this middly far distance. Does that make sense? Middle, mm. middle far. Good. Um, as one colour and one tone at the moment, as a broad backdrop. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one of the things about these trees is that it really needs the tree holes to break them up and there's loads as well in this this tree. I don't know if you can see that, do you want to have a look? 
we will visit the tree. I'm now going to go um, further back and I'm going to use a cooler colour, one of these colours I've mixed earlier. Um, back onto that base I think. So I think that was cobalt again. And some white. Let's just see what it looks like so I can kind of stagger it a bit. And then I can put the cooler colour still. And lighter, cooler, lighter as you go back. In other words, bluer and uh, lighter tone of value. That's not light enough. adding a little bit of ultramarine for the back strip of cool light. Might be a bit blue but I can always um, modify that a bit later. I do like the blue though. It's nice. And that green is coming through which is not a problem. So we bought some new microphones. The last filming we did, which was in Ilde Ray, was a bit of a disaster as we lost the first 20 minutes of sound. So we've really splashed out and got some posh microphones. Do you remember what the name is? D DGI? DJI. No. DJI. I'll write them down and put it on the post um, so you can see what we're using. I'm hoping they're gonna be good and not, not fail us. So my next stage now is the sky. Now that I've kind of come up the painting, um, I need to, to get the sky in. The main thing is to kind of cover the board and then go back over it. So um, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna take out probably the first bit of gray of that sky because I want some of that lovely backlit clouds. These are my colour tests um, and tonal value tests. So I, was, I started there with it is too dark. Um, so it needs to be a little bit darker because it is backlit. The sun is, if luckily I've got this great branch, you know, in my um, overhanging here. So it's protecting me from the sunshine. Um, but it's, it means that the sun is right behind the clouds and kind of creating a halo. I've used um, Naples, no, King's Blue, Deep, Permanent Rose and Cad Yellow to do this. So I'm just creating some little clouds. I'm starting with the kind of the darks first. Fluffies, you call them, I guess. I'm um, making sure that the tonal value is lighter than those hills in the distance. I think the hills might be a bit dark, but I'm um, making sure that the sky is lighter. I've done the, I've used more, I uh, can't remember the name of that today, 
What's that name? Mm. Cerulean? No. Nope. Prussian? Blue. King, King's blue. <sighs> anyway, yes, I've used more of that to make it cooler for the horizon line. We've got light, as I said, around the clouds, so I'm going to put some of that in now. I've used lemon yellow um, and Naples yellow with titanium um, and it's making sure uh, it's it's quite warm it's not like a white around it so I can do this and then I can make it lighter later you know tonal value lighter I'm going to go and work on the um, this area now because um, it needs it needs the extra layer of of the patchwork. So I'm going to try and get that right. So it needs to sit in the distance, but still need it's still bright enough. It's quite a hard. Um, balance I'm going to change brushes for the brownie ones. I'm using these Pro Art Sterling ones, they're really useful. They're soft and very easy to use. See the tonal value, it's not too bad, I think it's maybe a little bit lighter. quite hard to tell without putting the, the hedges and the trees between things, uh, between the fields. So I'm going to just stick those in now. Uh, it's very light and bluey. Um, it really gives a sense of um, going back in the distance. doesn't have to be exact of what I see but it helps as a guideline it's almost like a mo mosaic is that right mosaic mosaic <laughs> nice <laughs> of shapes It's now gone into shadow what I'm painting, so it looks so different. I can barely recognise which field's which. I painted this a couple of days ago, the same view, and it was in howling wind and no sun at all. 
and it's so different with a bit of sunshine on and backlit clouds it's really pretty I hope you're enjoying it too I'm going to put in these farm buildings um, I'll just mark some areas there for them quite dark put Pant Sienna and um, Ultramarine together. They make such a, a dark dark. It's almost black. It's quite useful. Sadly the sheep have not come down or come up I should say. Um, they keep on threatening and then go back again. Yeah I think it's too hot for them. Although under the shade of this tree, it's quite cool. Bitter. <laughs> yes, we've had to put layers on. Nice red side. I'm going to use that red also for the, the top of the building um, on the right. Pretend that it's in uh, France. Okay, and then we've got a light top as well. I could do with a, a flat. There we go. This one for um, the top of the building, which is lit. So I'm going to use one of those colours over there. I'm basically making a box. I'm modifying the lights at the back here. Too much. And also working on the edges. You know, those edges are too hard for how far away it is. There we are. I'm not happy with this. Um, this colour here, you can see it's a bit dirgy and it's not dirgy on the actual scene so I've started to lighten it. You can see it's, it will make the, um, make the darks better. So, and this is too, too milky I think. And I'm using quite thick paint now, no turpentine. Um, and I can kind of do some, wow, that really stands out. Can you see that? Oh, hello. <laughs> That'll be light and shadow. That's what I want. I want it to really stand out and I need some kind of, um, what would you call it? Contrast? No, uh, holes. Here is. Mm, dappled. Dappled, yeah. And get that in there. Looks a lot better. It's changed obviously, so it's it's now come down here the shadow. I'm having to make it up a little bit again. Remember it from what it was. It's adding a little bit of um, warmness to the shadow because it was a bit blue and because the grass has that kind of yellowy reddy undertone I'm putting that into the shadow as well and it looks better I think so you can see where I've just done a bit there um, it's not quite so blue I think it's a bit better modulated maybe you'd call it I'm not going to do the whole thing I'm going to 
of little areas. And then the same for the other, other one, although it's slightly bluer, that one. This is my wallaby wife. She's got a joey hanging out of a pouch. <laughs> This foreground is a mixture of the greens and the oranges and it's it's not kind of even you I'm kind of uh, doing lots of brushy strokes as you can see um, and the color is darker the strong you know the closer it gets darker richer color it's a lot more kind of washed out in the in there stronger here. I'm using lemon yellow, cerulean, a bit of scarlet. I've decided to have a go at putting a couple of sheep in from memory from last time and um, we have a little friend. That's Millie. The neighbor's dog um, who we're staying with some friends. She is such a cutie. Pearly. Hello, Pearly. Oh, she is loved. She's a whippet. She's so sweet. Gorgeous. Anyway, got distracted. Um, back to the sheep. Back to the sheep. So I've decided to put a couple in the foreground and then some in the background because it is about the sheep as well. And I really want some in, so I'm going to try. stick it in like that <laughs> so it's it's backlit like the cloud um, it's a similar sort of color as well um, I'm having them walking into the painting maybe another little one over here not too big some in the far distance I don't look very sheep like at the moment, but you just got to use imagination. I'm looking to see, I'm looking to paint them and they're not even there. <laughs> so normally sheep have their heads down in the um, feeding. Oh golly, that's dark. Meh. Meh. <laughs> um, gives an idea. Also, they have really cute ears. I'm going to use my trusty, um, what's it called, ivory rigger, and I'm going to make the ears lighter as though they're catching the light. That just looks a bit weird, but <laughs> not sure about that. I wouldn't go too close. <laughs> it's a shocker. <laughs> the back light on these are really important. Um, it kind of creates their shape and Uh, creating it makes it feel very sunlit as well so I can always sculpt them a bit better later okay it's coming I think it needs a stronger shadow in the in, you know, underneath them. Yeah, underneath them there. I went too light. There are some in the distance there. I'm going to zoom into them. Yes, please. Please do. At the 
moment mine are a bit tubby. Who um, wear all the grass? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of get an idea for them. Um, some of them have got dark faces and some have got light. I'm going to just stick a dark face on that one. Hoppa. The dark ears if I can. Putting in the fence posts. going lighter and smaller in the distance. But they still need to show up there. And this is going behind the hill. And we've got some in the front here as well. just about to put the um, light around the tree so kind of like the halo like the clouds have got so it's got the light behind it so I'm just gonna get that in um, it's kind of hitting around it catching the light and also a little bit through it too um, I've just changed the tonal value slightly there. Uh, if you go back to my palette, you can see, see those are the two. That was the one I've just been using and now I've just made it a bit darker, but it's still lighter than the original, this one that I've got. So it modulates um, between the, the three of them. There's three tonal values there then. It's hard to see because it's backlit my board. Um, I hope you can see it all right with that sun. This tree is quite important, so um, I want the light, making sure it's right on this. It's catching it, it you know, it's kind of there, catching it. Again, I'm, I'm gonna use the three tonal values um, this is kind of the mid-tone. I'm going to go a bit lighter still. And now this is the lighter. So you can see one, two, three tonal values on there. Um, kind of brings it to life a bit when you get the light in there. It's my favourite bit. Making sure those edges aren't too hard as well. I'm just looking for areas that um, pop out at me that aren't sitting right. Um, I thought that I could maybe add just a couple of 
kind of any bits, you know, like that, to make it more dappled. Break it up a bit. Um, and um, I think the sheep, I pull it off. Hang on. So we have come to the end. Um, I was lucky with the weather, it's gorgeous and quite a tricky subject. There is a lot in it with the foreground trees, the distant hills, buildings, um, all those greens as well. Enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good challenge and I hope that you've enjoyed it too. I think I pulled the sheep off. Um, don't be too harsh if you don't think so. And um, do like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd very much appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Okay, bye for now. Bye. bye.